Matthew West's song called The Motions has spent 13 consecutive weeks at number one on the Billboard Christian chart. It's from his Something to Say CD, a project that was put on hold two years ago when Matthew faced his greatest challenge. I used to feel unstoppable. I used to feel confident. Confident as a songwriter, confident as a singer, confident as a communicator. I was planning this next stage of my life. I was planning this new record with that confidence as a foundation. I knew what the next year, two years of my life was supposed to look like. Everything was planned out. Then I wind up finding out that nothing was going to look the way I thought it should. Matthew West was a singer and songwriter until a hemorrhaged blood vessel caused his voice to disappear. Matthew couldn't speak, much less sing, and he was quickly introduced to an uncomfortable season of silence. I had to cancel all my concerts. I had to cancel all my studio dates. I couldn't make my record when I thought I was supposed to. Everybody was waiting on me, my record label. I wasn't able to speak for two months. I was completely humbled. During his solitude, Matthew was forced to confront hidden fears and realign his career. And through his music, he shares the lesson he learned about totally depending on God with everything, including his voice. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Matthew West. Welcome, great to have you here. Yeah. That is quite a place that God put you in. This was a couple of years ago, and I mean, you, you really had it all. I mean, you had a great marriage, great career going, lots of plans mm -hmm. for the future. Absolutely. When you were first diagnosed with this, what was your first reaction? What did you feel? Well, I, 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 I was in complete shock, you know, because it was uh, the worst timing. You know, it didn't, yeah. this just didn't fall into is, my plans, yeah. you know, and that's the one thing I've found. It's just about the time that your life seems like everything's okay. Uh, you're going to get a curveball thrown at you sometimes, and it's going to change things up. And so I was, I was really shocked. I found myself facing um, probably more discouragement than I've mm -hmm. ever felt. You know, yeah. I was just going, really, God, is this your plan for yeah. me? That the thing that I love to do, the thing that I feel like you've called me to do, and is... that you'd experienced such incredible success in at that. Yeah, point. it was. I mean, everything was just kind of ramping up yeah. to where I'd had some success, and it seemed like more success was on the way. And uh, and here I was being brought to a complete and total standstill. I mean, yeah. uh, and wondering if I was going to be able to sing again. You know, the doctors they make no guarantees in yeah. surgeries like that. In fact, they're very clear that you know your voice. Uh, very likely that it's going to sound different. Was that your greatest mm -hmm. fear? Um, you know, I've, I began to face a lot of um, questions, and I think some of my fears went even beyond my singing. And a lot of the questions started with the words, what if? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or what if my voice doesn't come back? Yeah. What if it comes back, but I sound like a frog or something? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to hear me sing anymore. Yeah. And then it was bigger questions like, what if I can't provide for my family? Yeah. You know, because this was the equivalent of a construction worker hurting his back and being off the job. I mean, I was basically left unemployed for a little while. Well, and it wasn't like you just had the question and then you had the surgery yeah. and then you had the answer. I mean, there was a whole waiting room <laughs> period That's in right. there where you didn't where you didn't know. Tell yeah. me how that changed you and, and what God spoke to you during that time. Well, it, I called it my season of silence because it really was that. It was about two months where I was unable to speak, yeah. unable to sing. I had a dry erase board that I used to communicate. And uh, I tell you what, that was a challenge because so much of my life is surrounded by communicating, and talking sure. and singing and writing songs and doing all that. And I was unable to do that. I couldn't talk to my own daughter, you know. At the time, we had just one little girl. And uh, and I remember she'd look at me like, what's wrong? Like, Because I'm always the one <laughs> jumping around the house singing and dancing. And she's looking at me like, what's wrong, Daddy? Yeah. So those were some challenges. But through it, you know, I felt like God was just giving me answers. They weren't always the answers that I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, Psalm 3910 was a big one for me, and that was an answer that seemed to always come, and that was be still yeah. and know that I am God. And in my case, in my journaling, I just kept writing, be silent, yeah. <laughs> be still. And uh, <laughs> sometimes that was answer enough just to know that he is God and that he wasn't done working in this uh, recovery. Yeah. You know, I think so often, Matthew, we, you know, we kind of, we have the intention in our heart, we have the commitment in our spirits, but we kind of go through the process on a daily basis because we're busy. Right. How did what happened to you change your music? 
Well, I'll tell you what, sometimes, this is what I've, one of the biggest lessons I felt like I've walked away with. And in some ways, you don't uh, process a trial in your life yeah. all at once. You know, you sort of continue, you know, even two years after the fact, I still look back and I'll go through something and, and God will show me, oh, that's what you were preparing yeah. me for. And one of the things I've learned is that sometimes the worst things that happen to us in life are the best things. Yeah. Because God uses those to get our attention. But it really depends on how we respond to them, doesn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. I, um, I remember I heard a quote from C.S. Lewis one Sunday morning I was in church and I didn't want to go to church. I got to be honest. I, because yeah. going to church, everyone's standing around me singing yeah. and I had oh. to just stand there in silence. And the pastor's sermon that Sunday was, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? That was sort of a question I was finding myself asking. He read sure. this quote from C.S. Lewis that said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, yeah. he speaks in our conscience, but he shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. And suddenly I realized, you know, could it be that God's trying to get my attention through this trial? And he really did. And through it, he let me know uh, some things about my life that I had sort of been ignoring. And one of those big m lessons and messages that he taught to me was, you know, I've been watching you and you've been going through the motions too long. You've been living a lukewarm life. And I, I suddenly began to look back at my life, growing up as a preacher's kid and realizing just how good I've gotten at looking and talking and acting like my life is all together, making everybody around me think that I'm doing all right. But really, I'm just going through the motions and God wanted the condition of my heart to change. Yeah. When people listen to your music, what do you want them to come away with? Wow, well, you know, I hope that um, people will listen to my music and know that the songs from start to finish, they're inspired by real life. And, uh, you know, The Motions is a song, case in point, that I wrote that song before my surgery, but the lyrics took on a new meaning after the surgery. I bet they did. Because of the lessons that God taught to me. And, you know, so I really hope that my songs can be a soundtrack for life and for the broken pieces of our life, that people can know that, you know, no matter how broken we feel, uh, God's never done with us. Yeah. You know, just like that story we heard earlier, that woman and uh, what God did in her life. You know, I, yeah. that's one thing that I, I really hope people will take away from my music and uh, particularly with, with the song, The Motions, inspiring people to, you know, make a change in their lives. We all have those areas of our lives where we get stuck in a rut and our, our journey of faith just becomes sort of stale and yes. lukewarm. And, uh, and so I felt like God's called me to challenge people as he's brought me back, he's given me my voice back. Yeah. Suddenly I had this new desire to say, man, I, I don't wanna waste a single second of this life and yes. this second chance that I've been given. And, uh, and that's what God's redemption is about in all of our lives. It's never too late to take that step, to make yeah. that challenge and say, I'm not gonna go through the motions, I'm gonna give everything I have to the one who's given everything to me. Yeah. Yeah, what is it they say? You can never be too dead for a resurrection. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. I've been there. It's a new beginning, and you've got so much to say. We're going to let you get ready to sing All with right. your band, if right. you will. So Absolutely. if you'll go join them on stage. I think this is one of the amazing things. Matthew West's new CD is called Something to Say, and that title was given to this before he ever experienced what he went through with losing his voice and possibly losing his singing career. This is available, by the way, wherever music is sold. And now Matthew West and his band are going to perform the song he just spoke to us all about. It's called The Motions. Let God speak to your own heart as he sings. Here's Matthew West.